What's up, guys? We're going to go through uh, some really cool things here that are called the Windows Terminal. And um, if you guys don't know what Windows Terminal is, it's Microsoft's kind of a new take on like the old command prompt shell host type thing. And, um, you know, if you've been working on software development at, for any period in time, you probably have had to do stuff through the CLI or through the command line at some point, right? And in the past, you would do something like this, and you would just say, you know, open, open command prompt, and you'd have that. But then you get to the point where you have to, like, okay, let's open Ubuntu 2, and then you have this screen also, and you're like, okay, that's another screen. Well, let's open PowerShell also, and then pretty soon you have a bunch of screens, and you have a bunch of windows, and kind of managing this stuff is, like, a, a nightmare, especially if you are having multiple, you know, multiple of these, and you're trying to run a bunch of scripts and all of them. So what we're going to do today is set up um, uh, this kind of Windows terminal level up. So if you guys don't know what Windows Terminal is, it's um, pretty much um, the upgraded version of this where you can have everything in one place. So I already have the Terminal app installed here, but if you guys want to get this installed, all you got to do is go to the Microsoft Store, open up Microsoft Store, type in Windows Terminal. I have it here already, as you can see. And, um, you know, you just click this, install it, and eventually it'll install in the system. You can open it up and you'll have Windows Terminal here. Oops, sorry. That's the PowerShell. Windows Terminal. I guess it doesn't show up on that thing. That's interesting, but I haven't been here, so here's Windows Terminal. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is, um, if you notice here, and I, every time I type PowerShell here, this is the default PowerShell app. And so this is, I think, PowerShell 6 or something. It's something that comes pre-installed on all like Windows systems. Um, but actually, that is not the most recent uh, version of PowerShell. So what we want to do is, while we're still in the store, you want to go over here, type in PowerShell, and we want to find the latest PowerShell version, which is this one. And we're gonna install that one. So I've already installed it on my machine, but you can click install here, and it'll install it there. Um, so this is PowerShell, I think, like 7.2.4 right now, as of like May 25th, 2022. Um, so that that is a, a we're gonna need this because PowerShell uh, is kind of uh, kind of the main you know uh, command button that we're gonna be using. Um, the other optional thing you can do is if you guys uh, are you know using WSL or Ubuntu, you can also go here in the Windows Store and install Ubuntu here. Um, so if you click on the the one the default Ubuntu one, it's going to default to the uh, the long term support version, which is so let me go back here, which is right now uh, 20 oh I guess right now it's 22.04. So that is the the most recent version. So if you click on Ubuntu and you install that, you're going to install the the, the 22.04 one, which is um, I guess new because I think this must have, this must have been pretty recent, but um, it was 20.04. So I think if you run any like um, system like an AWS or anything like that. Um, you had the option of like 20.4 or 18, and I think a lot of a lot of the older EC2s and stuff are on 18, but a lot of people are using 20.4. And there's not a huge amount of difference between them, but there are a lot of uh, improvements. Obviously, it's the new versions, so you can all get, go ahead and install that too. Um, the other option is you can also, you know, do it in PowerShell and do um, WSL dash dash install. Um, to keep in mind that if you have already installed this within your um, your kind of system through the store, doing it through the PowerShell could do a secondary install and you might have some issues with that. Um, okay, so now that you have everything installed, um, how do we set this up? So first of all, we're going to go to um, Windows Terminal here and if you can see, uh, I've launched Windows Terminal and it's uh, running PowerShell. So um, this is the old PowerShell though, if you can look at this icon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here, we're going to go to settings and right here we're going to change this to the new PowerShell, which is what we want, right? We want this new PowerShell. And we're also gonna make our default terminal application this new window terminal instead of command host. And we hit save. So now when you run, um, you know, PowerShell, uh, it'll still open PowerShell through there. But if you run, uh, let's say CMD, command prompt, it's gonna open the command prompt now in Windows terminal as opposed to just uh, the old command prompt interface, the, the console. Um, so that's pretty nice in that Windows is, uh, terminal is your default. So what we want to do here is um, we're going to also uh, change things so that we don't we don't have this Windows PowerShell um, as kind of the default anymore. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to open this JSON file. And if you have a Visual Studio Code, you want to open this in Visual Studio Code. And what we can do here is we can uh, set our, our profiles here. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to, I've already done it here, but I've moved um, my uh, Windows Terminal, the new PowerShell, this is the new PowerShell, up here above the old PowerShell, and I've set the old PowerShell to hidden. And this is uh, true, so this is hidden. And if you can see here, um, down at the bottom, um, this, these two Ubuntus are the, the Ubuntus that uh, um, have, no, let me just mute that really fast. Uh, you've got the Ubuntus that are, um, so this is the one that I've installed through WSL, and this is the one that was installed through um, 
the, the store. So you will have two like Ubuntu versions here if you install it. Now the nice thing is uh, we can uh, kind of move this around. So I can I can move this, let's say, down to the bottom. So move this to the bottom. And save that and you go to Windows Terminal, immediately you're gonna see here that PowerShell is not at the bottom of this list. And you can see I have hidden uh, this PowerShell, but if I set this to false, then it will show up again as an option here. Um, so we don't really want that because we don't want to use the old PowerShell, so what I'm going to do is going to revert all those changes. Right there, and then we're going to set this to that, and then we're going to go back to here. So now now we have PowerShell as the first one, and then we have our command prompt and Ubuntu as another option. So this is really cool because now we can open PowerShell and uh, command prompt in the same window as well as um, Ubuntu. So we can have all three of these open at the same time. Now if I click this and hit Alt, hold Alt while I'm clicking Ubuntu, I can open these side by side. And then I click back and forth, you know, I can do that. And then I can, let's say I need another PowerShell, we can do it again, and here we go. And that's pretty, that's pretty cool, right? So that, that you can open up all these um, kind of terminals. Now, we're gonna do a couple upgrades here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and grab um, some fonts. So if you can see here on my defaults, um, I have a Cascadia uh, Cove NF, and what that is is a, is a nerd font. So we're gonna go hold nerd fonts, go to nerdfonts.com, go to downloads, and right here we're gonna download this Cascadia Cove nerd font. So I already have it downloaded here, but it's a zip file, and then eventually you're gonna um, go to your, go to your uh, downloads here, and then you're gonna unzip that zip file, and then you're gonna get this, these things. And you can hit a Windows key, uh, just type in fonts, and open the fonts control panel, and what you want to do is you're going to copy all of these into here and just drag and drop. And what you'll do, what that'll do is it'll install um, all these fonts. Um, so why do we want these fonts? Well, what we're going to do um, here is also uh, do a couple upgrades to our terminal. So there's uh, a nice thing called uh, Windows, uh, sorry, oh my posh. Um, so let me search that up. So oh my posh dev, I think is the website. Yes, oh my posh dev. So this thing is going to make our command prompt look something like this. So if you look at our terminal right now, we have PowerShell. This is your basic PowerShell. You know, it shows you your directory and your user and everything. Um, it's kind of cool, I guess. Not super, not super interesting, right? So it's 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 very basic what you're kind of used to. But we're going to upgrade this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to install here. So you see here we're going to do winget install oh my posh. Okay, so we're going to run that. Winget install oh my posh. Boom. All right, downloading, installing here. Nice, now we're gonna do one get upgrade just to make sure that we have the latest version. No up, go cool. update, found, all right, cool. So this, that's cool. Now if we run, oh my posh, dot exe, you know, now we have it installed and you can see all these uh, command line items. So question is how do we get this um, to actually look um, like what we saw on that front screen so for the prompt we're gonna see uh, we're gonna have to create a notepad so there's a couple ways to do this you can do notepad profile um, and then it, it'll open up your profile um, but you can see that uh, right here uh, this is no files there so do we want to create a new file so um, if it might give you a, a, a kind of an error here and says like I can't find the folder path but that means that, that this PowerShell folder probably doesn't exist in your OneDrive documents folder. So you you have to go to your uh, OneDrive folder, go to your documents, and then create this PowerShell folder. And then within that, we're going to create um, uh, a PowerShell script here. So let's do that again. Go pass profile, create new file. Yes. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to import um, this right here. This line. Put it here. Save it. Boom. All right. Nice. Now we're going to run profile again. Reload the profile and boom, there we go. We got some nice looking uh, items here. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. So what would have happened if we didn't have those nerd fonts? You remember we imported those nerd fonts. So if I remove this, um, you know, I don't enable the nerd font, uh, and then I run something, and then I go back here. You immediately see that these kind of like uh, rounded edges and diamond type of things are uh, unrenderable by the the PowerShell. So um, we we need that there to kind of keep it uh, in. Uh, the yeah in the system so um, we can also do the same thing um, and render this in Ubuntu so let's go to Ubuntu and right now you can see my Ubuntu um, is loading is also just you know your basic Ubuntu so, so let's go to Linux 
and we're gonna do a manual install. So I'm gonna do this copy, download on my posh, go back to my terminal, paste this anyways, password. If I typed it right, typed it wrong. <laughs> it's a problem with long passwords, right? It's very easy to type wrong. Okay, do that. Now we're gonna download this and run this also. Paste anyways. Boom, boom, boom. Remove the zip file. All right, so now to set up the prompt for this, we gotta do this one and go to bash for prompt. So we're gonna um, look for this profile. So in Ubuntu, it's uh, not bash RC, it's actually the tilde slash dot profile. So we're gonna do, do vi tilde profile. Okay, and then we're gonna add to this, so hit I for insert. And we're gonna go all the way down here. Boom, and then we're gonna add this. And we're gonna do that, hit escape, hit the colon sign, W for write, Q for quit, force it. And then we're gonna execute bash, and then we're gonna reload the profile. And I have permission denied. So let's see, let's do sudo chmod 755. Still permission denied. Okay, I think the easier way is probably just to restart Ubuntu. Permission denied. Why is that? Hmm. That's an interesting one. Okay, I'll have to figure that one out later. But, um, user local bin oh my posh permission. Oh, the oh my posh is permission denied. Okay, so let's go to user. See, this is the thing about um, programming and stuff and just systems in general. Um, things change very rapidly, so you know. By the time I post this video, um, there might be another update or something like that, and you guys would probably have to do this kind of troubleshooting. So it's good to just uh, do it now. So let's go to this bin file. Yeah, okay. Oh my gosh, is there? So let's see mod that. Uh, okay, I need a sudo chmod because gotta be a super user to do that on Linux. Password again. Now let's do the reload profile. Oh, that's not the reload profile. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, so now you can see, same thing, same issue here, right? Um, we don't have the nerd fonts enabled here, so let's go to Visual Studio. Let's copy this font and add it to our Ubuntu one. Right here, do that. Go back here, um, reload here, and oh, interesting. Is that the right one? Did I do it to the right one? Let's try this one. It should be the right one. Oh, I did the wrong. This is the hidden one. Ah, okay, well, I can add it to that one too, you know. Boom, there we go. Okay, so nice. So we have here, um, you can see everything here. So if I cd into like home, toasty, and then let's see, let's go to. Actually, let's go to the mount, I think. CD, mount, C. So this is the system, the Windows system. Um, it shows me what folder I'm currently in. And if I do something wrong, like type a random thing in, um, you see that little X thing here? It'll show you that it's like a command not found, you know, which is pretty useful. Um, so we're doing that for, we've done that for both of these. So that's how we install on with Posh. That's how we set it up. And um, we can set it up for PowerShell and for, um, sorry, uh, Ubuntu also. Um, so that's nice and all, but let's do some uh, additional updates here, right? Let's see if we can uh, kind of uh, upgrade our items. So if you go over to my GitHub, so let's go to GitHub. You'll see that there is a profile here that I have on my GIS. Let's go to my GIS. So I've set up um, this settings JSON here. And you can see here I've uh, added key, key bindings. I, I pulled these from Scott Hanselman. So if you uh, know Scott Hanselman, he's a pretty well-known uh, kind of Windows guy, um, PowerShell guy. Um, this is his blog. You know, he, he does a lot of this stuff. So a lot of this information is um, secondhand from him. Um, and we're going to do uh, kind of this update here. So let's pull this raw. I'm going to pull raw here. Make sure... Um, 
that all these items are actually no, I'm just gonna pull the, the key bindings so we're gonna go key bindings to here and I'm gonna add the key bindings to mine so key bindings all right so key bindings nice okay so that that is how we're gonna set our key bindings and if you do here so this is this lets us easily do things like control C control V and um, you know we can do things like shift F11 for focus mode shift F11 for toggle focus mode on and then we can do things like uh, let's see so this one is open search bus so control shift F that's nice um, let's say alt shift D to duplicate the, the window that's nice that's very quick and we can do that for multiple times you know multi make multiple of these and then do let's do alt W to close them right uh, I think that's all W. Is it Control W? It might be Control W. Yeah, Control W to close all those windows, right? So that's nice too. Okay, so these are just kind of like keys you can play with. You can um, change them. Um, you know, there's this website will tell you how to do that, and um, that's pretty nice. So that's a quality of life thing we can do. And then let's go back to my gist. Let's go to my pro uh, Microsoft profile. So this Microsoft PowerShell profile. So here, if you see it, where there's this import terminal modules thing. So if you uh, if you want to make your terminal look super nice, um, let's do. So if you we do ls here or directory, ls is uh, you know Linuxism, but um, dir is the PowerShell Windows thing. You see here we can see all the files, read write mode. That's kind of cool, but kind of boring. So terminal icons is a really cool um, plugin for PowerShell that um, you can kind of use, and uh, here we can install here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this right. Install terminal repository icons whoops I typed I must have typed the wrong thing right there, there we go okay so we're going to install this module and then we're going to go back to the profile so this is the profile that we have and what we're going to do is go to my suggest go raw control a copy this and we're going to put this in the profile. Um, if you want to see, you can open this text pad in. Actually, let's do that. Let's open. Let's don't save. Let's let's open this in a uh, in Visual Studio Code because it's just easier to to look at, you know. So I'm going to open this with Visual Studio Code. Boom. Okay. Nice. Looks a lot better, right? So go up here. Let's see. So this is the same line, right? Right, so this line is the same line as this line. So what we're gonna do is um, delete this. And now we're gonna import the module for the terminal icons that we just installed. And terminal modules is gonna give us the ability to um, uh, do cool things like uh, see the icons for the file types. Um, and then if you see here, this config is how you configure um, the theme for your PowerShell. So actually, all of these items here, like these little um, kind of like widgets, I guess you would speak for the command line, are all, all configurable. So these are all configurable, and um, this is the theme, and this is the location of the theme. So if we go to that location, um, so this is actually not my system. So let's go. This is my my other system, and then we go here, and we search this location. Uh, yeah, you'll see I opened up that file, right? So we opened up that file. Let me just go to the folder to show you that there's multiple. So, oh my posh comes installed with all these themes, and the default theme is this one, which is uh, Jan de Dobler. So he's, I think he's the one who made uh, she, he, she, I don't know, um, that made the one uh, that made this entire kind of oh my posh um, interface, and it's pretty nice. You can change the segments. So each of these things are called segments, and um, you can change the color, background, you know, icon types, folders. And that's really cool. So um, I actually have one of these set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, create one in this folder. Um, so let's go here. Let's go create a new file. And we're going to call this file my oh my posh theme dot omp. And then we're going to make this a dot json. So yes, does this want to be json file? Yes. Okay. Let's open this in. Visual Studio Code, and go back to the gist that I have on mine. So this, these are all pre-made already. So let's go back to my gist, GitHub, and we're gonna go to gist here. 
and then I have this theme right here. So let's look at this theme. And I, uh, it's pretty much based off the default theme, but with some changes. And we're going to paste that here and save it. Now, we're going to go back to this PowerShell profile and point it to that new theme. So we're going to point it to that my, oh my, posh theme. And save it. So that's pretty cool. And if you go back here and hit enter, um, I think we might have to reload. Yeah, there we go. So reload here. And you see I've changed this here. So um, we can do something like, uh, this was as a little bit more info, like it takes the, how much time it takes to run the command. This is your PowerShell, uh, 15, 46 at a time. Um, so let's go to uh, OneDrive Documents GitHub, where I have my GitHub repos, and let's see, I have two repos here. And uh, you can see now that the terminal icons that we installed are showing folders because these are folders. So if we CD, and uh, I'll show you how I get this stuff here later, but like this, this option is not a, a default thing, um, but it is actually this import module PS read line. So we can go walk through how to do that too. But let's go to this repo. And you can see that it uh, shows a GitHub icon, a Git icon. And now if we go here, you can see all these different file types. Um, and it tells you what branch it is. So let's do git status. Let's see, okay, we're up to date. And we can go git checkout uh, master. And you, oops, is it not master, is it main? Git branch, let's see. Yeah, it's main. Git checkout main. And if you switch to main, then it switches to main, and it's pretty cool. So it'll do things like that. It'll tell you which branch you're on. So let's go back to um, the version 1.0.5 branch. And let me open up the file here, and let's just let's just make an edit, right? Let's let's change something in that repo. Let's go to documents, GitHub. Um, we're in civilization. Let me go to the source. Java. This is a Java project. Oh man, there's so many folders. I forgot how many folders are in Java. Um, let's open this in Visual Code also, even though most people who do Java like doing things in, you know, IntelliJ. Just hit enter, or backspacing some space, hit save. And then we go back here, and then we go back to our terminal. You get status. And you can see um, this changes because it says, okay, you have one different modified file, and you can stage this change, and then you can, you know, get add that file. And then git commit, let's say a test commit, boom. And then now it changes again, saying you have one commit ready to push. So this is pretty neat. Um, and you know, at any point in time, you can um, change this, modify this, and it will give you information about GitHub, which is really great. Um, I think it's not technically GitHub itself, even though it's a GitHub icon. It is technically just all Git repos. So if you have any Git repo, it will do the same thing. Um, let's, let's type a wrong command. Let's type something that's like doesn't exist, like do not exist. So now it's giving you an error. It's like, oh, this is like the wrong thing. Like, how do you know? Uh, it's giving you more of a, a more of a message instead of just like the X, and that's also very useful. So that's how you set up your profiles, and uh, we're going to do uh, that. So let me go to how to install PS Reline. So um, as of uh, this thing. As of this video, I guess, um, PS Readline is now uh, available, so you can install here by running this. And you have to make sure you have this flag, allow pre-release. Um, so you're going to run this, run this here. I'm going to install PS Readline. And then you need to enable predictive IntelliSense. And this is going to give us the nice little thing where when we type this, it tells us, you know, based on our history, um, what, uh, like, little things you can, uh, yeah, you know, quickly IntelliSense will tell you like the possible things. So you can do this, enable preline, set PS3 line. Oops. Let's go back there. Hit enter. And then uh, now you'll have the ability to see things like this. Um, so that's very useful. Um, and if you go back to the profile that we saw, um, all these little options here are just like script blocks for a command line that, I, again, I got these from Scott Hanselman. They're very useful and uh, it allows you to quickly use things like that on um, on PowerShell and then you can do things like that. Um, another thing you can install is a module called Z. So Z is very helpful if you um, know what Z is. Um, you can do install module Z and say yes to all and it will install module Z. 
and Z uh, is similar to CD, but it's just a fast rate of CD, so um, it knows based on your history what, what file you're just in. So let's say like Civ, and then those that um, so it's CD to uh, this one, right? And then now let's CD back to this one. CD back, and now if I just type git, it knows. Right? It just knows that that's the path that I was just at, and it can you can quickly jump between file systems like that. So it's pretty, it's pretty nice, pretty nifty, and that's pretty good. Um, oh, there's a Java extension for Visual Studio. That's good to know. Um, that's my cat. If you guys <laughs> like uh, cats, and I think that's pretty much it. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to add. Um, but you can see that this is very powerful uh, for Ubuntu, and um, the other thing is for Ubuntu, um, in order to make sure that this shows up, I forgot to mention that um, you have to go and set this up also for your prompt. So if you go to the profile uh, here, this bash RC profile, um, you have to make sure that, let's see, so let's cat that profile again. You can point it to your um, the same file that your PowerShell is pointing to, um, and that makes sure that you are pulling from the same profile. So um, the way we do that is um, here, you can see that it still has the old profile in Ubuntu and it doesn't have this new profile uh, for, or sorry, I should say theme. And so we're gonna do uh, VI and we're gonna modify this really quick. And here when it says eval, so if we go to customize, we want to add this, this line here. And we're gonna point this to, um, the we're going to point this to the, the the windows subsystem file system so here we're going to go to so this, in my system it would be slash mnt slash c slash users slash, um, and then uh, let's just copy that actually it's easier if i just copy it right boom 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 so this this file path right here that's what we want and we're going to add that to this section here And you can make sure that these are all the right direction slashes because Windows and Ubuntu are different. There's probably a better way to do this. I'm sure you guys can let me know in the comments. Um, but this is how we make sure that um, our Ubuntu and our, write that out, uh, PowerShell are using the same um, the same thing. So if we open new Ubuntu now, boom. Okay, we have the same the same setup here, and um, now we have the same themes running, and that's pretty great. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, let me see if there's anything else that I want to add. Uh, there are other things that I will probably save for another video. Um, like there are things like you can add um, a putty, for example, putty profiles, um, and rendering icons there um, has been shown already so we've been able to predict the telesense which is very very useful so like this is just saves you so much time like it's the greatest thing ever and uh yeah so if you guys like this video um be sure to like and subscribe share it with your friends um hopefully this helps you um kind of get a sense of how you can do this and the nice thing is all of this is super customizable um, I'll post links for all of these, um, you know, sites for my gist and everything, uh, nerd fonts, all that stuff down in the uh, description below. Um, so thank you and 